Now, I'm here this week answering your questions, and this one is a doozy. So I was so thrilled to see it hit my inbox from a wonderful past client. And a reminder that if you have questions, I would love to hear them. So share your challenges, what you want to know, what you've been hearing about supplements and nutrition for fat loss, for metabolism, for health and energy, and I will answer them in an email video just like this one. Now, this video is going to be for you if you are 30 or 35 plus and female, you are tired of being tired, having brain fog, forgetting things that you would never forget, finding yourself grumpier, snappier, or just feeling low compared to yourself. If weight has been creeping up and it's way harder to lose, even though you're doing what seems like the right things, and especially if you've been exercising and active and just not seeing the same results, like you're hitting the gym and strength isn't going up, you're running and your endurance and times aren't getting better, this one, absolutely for you. So should I start taking creatine to help with perimenopause? Now, before you click away, because you're like, I'm 35, I'm not in perimenopause, slow it down. Now, perimenopause is a five to 10 year process. It's not just the few months or the year before we hit menopause. It's something most of us are never taught about until it happens. And we are still not really educating women on what to expect or what is changing and how it's affecting your metabolism. So what I want to dig into first is the what is perimenopause and why creatine might be helpful. We'll talk about the research. So the two ways that actually can be really amazing to get you to your goals and just make you feel like a normal human again, but also do not miss the end because we'll talk about who should not take it as well as what might be a better focus depending on where you are and what you're experiencing. So this is a juicy one, buckle up. Now, first and foremost, Creatine is a chemical that our muscle uses for quick energy. So we use it for classically things where you need it ASAP. So you're lifting a heavy weight, you're sprinting, you're running up a hill, you're on your spin bike, but even think sit to stand or lifting that really heavy Ikea box off the platform and into your hatchback because you're proving a point to a 19 year old Ikea person that you can deadlift just as much as anybody else. Now, any of those quick, fast movements require chemical energy faster than or muscles can burn fuel like glucose or fat for. So we need an immediate source and that's what creatine is and we do make it on our own. Supplementing creatine is going to increase those stores. So we'll talk about why that's important as we hit perimenopause. The other thing I really wanna think about here is there's sort of two ways it can work because it can also affect our brain cells. They use creatine too. So if the more energy, motivation, drive, memory is bugging you. We're going to talk about the research there as well and why it might be a good option or you might want to try other things first. Now, before we dig in, how do you know if you're in perimenopause? Now, this is a bit of a trick. Perimenopause is not very well studied compared to any other condition and particularly the ones men go through or even menopause or menstruation. It's kind of like the gray middle that nobody tells us about. And because it's a long period, usually I have clients sort of estimate if you are mid thirties and up, there's a strong chance you're at least starting that process. So I'm 39, there's a good chance I'm in there somewhere. Estrogen is fluctuating at this time. So it's gradually declining in perimenopause, but it goes up and down. So you may have minor symptoms that come and go. So it can be really tricky to know, is this perimenopause or not? The other thing being that if you check estrogen, if you're in one of those up times, it might still technically be in range. And so blood work isn't always a reliable way to figure this out. Now, low or more labile, so like up and down moods, like one day you're fine, next week you're grumpier, absolutely normal feeling, grumpy, tired, more snappy is the one my clients say a lot. Difficulty getting to sleep or staying asleep, especially if you're an okay sleeper before, or if like me, you're not a great sleeper, you notice it getting a lot worse. I will say my sleep scores have gone down the last couple of years. I've worked really hard at it. Irregular or more painful periods that again may come and go after some a few cycles, lower energy, brain fog, forgetting things or misplacing things when it's not really your personality. And especially that working out and just not seeing improvement in strength, endurance, and speed. Any of the things that would normally get better for the effort that you are pouring into that. Now, the challenge is those can also be symptoms of other things. So this really harkens to making sure you have a great team, a dietitian, a doc, people to work with you on this stuff. But if you're mid thirties and you're having some of these even on and off, there's a good chance you are 
in this age group. And so this video is important. Now, let's talk about that research. How might creatine help and should you take it? That first and most obvious one is metabolism, weight loss, muscle mass. Now, when we increase that creatine in our muscle with supplementation, so above our normal levels, this increases the number of miles or reps or sprints we can get in, which increases the amount of effort you get out of that workout and increases your muscle mass, as well as all those feel good, happy hormones that come with it. With that increase in muscle mass, we increase our calorie burn. So most of our calorie burn comes from that tissue. And as estrogen goes down, we lose muscle mass much more easily and we have to work harder to increase it. So because creatine makes it easier to build muscle mass, both when we exercise, but in some studies, even without exercise, it can be very useful for increasing metabolic rate, making it easier to lose weight and keep it off long-term. So definitely might be useful if you've got that sticky weight that just won't come off, like your dress pants aren't fitting and it's slow creeping, even though you haven't changed anything, very useful. Um, the other thing that it does in the research is energy and mood. And so this is actually some pretty potent research. When I dug in last year to look at it for another fight, I was really surprised. There is some solid research on creatine's effect on overall energy, so both perceived and chemical, because remember our brain uses it, so our perceived sense of energy and wellness goes up when we have an easier access to that quick fuel, but it also decreases depressive and in some cases anxiety symptoms in quite significant ways in clinical trials. Both are super common in perimenopause because both estrogen and progesterone regulate our mood and those aspects of it particularly. So if you're struggling with just feeling low all the time, that's not who you are. And situationally, you're like, life isn't that bad. I should feel better. This might be something to think about. Definitely talk to your doc and your therapist, make sure you're covering all of your bases, but it might be worth a try to see if increasing that available energy in your brain makes it easier to feel like yourself, to have that energy and to feel motivated again, because that motivation, that drive, they're the most common complaints from my otherwise like hardworking, smart, typically driven women who are 35 plus just struggling to do the things that normally they would love to do and thrive doing. Now, if you've been snappier, grumpier, or just feeling that cloud over your head, even when things are good, something to think about for sure. Now, the two caveats I have for you might not want to try this are one, responders and non-responders. So this one's a bit of a take with a grain of salt. So in the research with women particularly, what we see is some people do respond. So their muscle creatine increases when we supplement and some don't. So it doesn't go up very significantly. And they also don't see the benefits that we would measure as far as energy or muscle changes or strength or things like that. So if you've tried creatine and given it a good six plus weeks and didn't see any improvement, don't worry. There's nothing wrong with you. It's just not the right thing, which really speaks to the need for personalized again, right? Don't stress. You're not doing it wrong. And don't just drive your dose up higher than is suggested, hoping that more is better because that might have some side effects. But if you're a responder and it's working and you've got minimal side effects, definitely might be worthwhile. The other is gut issues. So if you have IBS, so or so irritable bowel syndrome or IBD, like Crohn's or colitis, or are just struggling with kind of like not yet diagnosed gut issues, especially if you're diarrhea prone or get urgency, creatine can speed up motility and cause diarrhea in some people. And my experience with clients is that my diarrhea prone ones almost always respond poorly to creatine as far as their gut symptoms. What I would recommend is getting the gut sorted first and then trying creatine once it's steady 80% of the time. You're much more likely to, one, not feel like absolute garbage while you're taking it, and two, get a response because you're actually going to absorb it if your gut's not moving too quickly. So be really careful if you've got pre-existing digestive issues here. Creatine isn't causing your IBS, but it might be making it worse. Now, should you actually focus on before you get to creatine? You guys, there is so much that helps hormones, but the most underrated one is not a fancy expensive supplement. It is your protein. So if you are struggling with sticky weight loss, with energy, with brain fog, with not enough muscle mass, and you might be in perimenopause, remember, we are going to lose muscle mass much more easily. So you need that 25 plus grams of protein at every darn meal and probably 1.5 grams of protein per kilo of body weight a day in order to hold on to the muscle you have, to build new muscle if you're active and to prevent muscle loss if you're losing weight. It's essential for your metabolic rate and making weight loss easier. 
as well as regulating hunger and fullness hormones, which can be out of whack if your sleep is off thanks to that declining estrogen. So start there first before you get to creatine. So you're not just like flushing those supplement dollars down the toilet because creatine's positive effects won't really last long if you're not hitting that protein part first. It's the foundation of that structure for sure. Now, the thing here is creatine is super helpful for so many people and it's very safe as long as you don't have pre-existing kidney disease and almost all supplements are off limits if you have pre-existing kidney disease. But this is actually my first line for my women who might be going through perimenopause or menopause. I use things like protein, iron, vitamin D, myonositol, changing the meal balance to better support your hormones as first line things because they address that foundation again. And there's so much personalization that comes here based on the symptoms you're having and the body and genetics you're experiencing. So as much as I just am so hopeful you get so much value out of these videos, if you're struggling with something specific, there is so much importance to get support, whether that's me or someone else. And a gentle reminder that if you feel ready to have enough energy to hit spin class at lunch or play with your kids in the park after work, lose weight more easily and actually fit in those dress pants without sacrificing wine or all joy in your life, I'm here. That is my job and that is the work that I absolutely live for. So hit the apply link below to learn a little bit more about my programs, how I help, and we'll connect to get you feeling good in your skin again. Thank you so much. And don't forget to let me know what your challenges are.